thanks for joining us back in our channel. In today's video, we'll be interviewing John, one of the co-founders of SciTeens, who's actually an undergraduate student studying computer science with applied mathematics. Make sure to stick around to hear his journey through STEM as he provides useful information as well as good tips that can help you kick off your STEM career. Now, before you leave, make sure you tell your friend's friend's cousin to sign up for SciTeens and also to subscribe to SciTeens. Now, in the description below, you'll find the timestamps for different points of our interview that may be useful for you if you want to skip around. So without further ado, let's get started. Hey, what's going on guys? My name is John Suter. I am a current junior who is studying applied mathematics as well as computational science. Computational science is kind of like computer science, even though it's more algorithm heavy. Um, that's why I like it, to be honest. So in high school, what I think really got me into STEM was probably um, taking physics. And this really was, you know, it was an awesome class, an awesome teacher. And physics is just so crazy because it can explain literally everything around you, which was really cool to me. Um, you know, I had a lot of great friends in that class and I think they really pushed me um, and we all pushed each other to really explore this um, deeper. And so, you know, that really reflected well on me and I just loved going home and watching YouTube videos as well, like Veritas, um, um, even 3 Blue, 1 Brown, you know, just YouTube videos like that were just so interesting. You get to dive more into these niche topics outside of the classroom and that's what I found really cool. So in high school, I actually was involved in the science fair and I predominantly worked on a project that had to do with hydroponics. Um, and so hydroponics is actually a method of growing plants without any soil use, which I found really cool. And I also pursued this topic just because I had a previous interest in um, Arduino and Internet of Things. And so I just thought it was awesome just because, you know, you always hear NASA talking about going to different planets and, you know, how are you actually going to grow things, get food here and there. And hydroponics is a uh, recurring topic when it comes to these discussions. So I said, you know what, I'd be interested to explore this myself. And so I did. And I learned so much. I learned about, you know, controlling water flow and using, you know, fundamental equations, even like Bernoulli's principle, which, you know, governs all the laws that have to do with water dynamics at a very basic level. Um, as well as like the key nutrients that plants need or even, you know, just programming the system to run efficiently and conserve energy. And, you know, all these different factors going into it, I thought it was, it was awesome and it could have huge implications for the future. Yeah, so I actually watched a ton of YouTube videos and I read a lot of personal blogs. So interestingly enough, there's a huge community online that's really interested in hydroponics. Um, even on Reddit, you can find a lot of like hydroponics uh, subreddits talking about, you know, people, a lot of people are like bragging about what they grew, but they'll also, there's a lot of stuff that's instructional, like, you know, what nutrients should I use or how to actually build a rig for myself. So, I mean, all these resources were all I needed as well as maybe like a few books I picked up from the library um, to actually help me get started creating a hydroponic system. So in high school, I was actually uh, really privileged in that I got the opportunity to participate in a high school research program. And it's really cool because like high school research programs are to college what like dual enrollment courses are to like college courses. And that they're almost like a primer where they let you, you know, get an early start on participating in these awesome like experiences that you would only necessarily get once you're in college. And so I applied for this program called the Young Scholars Program. And funny story, uh, this is a, you know, a life lesson, always check your spam because I didn't know until the day when applications were, uh, you know, due that I actually had gotten accepted into the program. And this is because it all went to my spam. So I was like, uh, whoops. But nonetheless, I went to the program awesome time. I learned so much about research, um, how important it is to do like a thorough literature review and making the most of online resources. And I even got to dive into um, programming as well, which really helped out. It was like more scientific programming based in that we used um, differential equations to model predator prey relationships. And I thought it was awesome. So 
what made YSP great was the whole fact that it was free, which was really nice. Um, as long as you could travel to and from there, they would pay for everything, food, board, and even the classes and the research that you participated in. And I think this was really huge, and I think it was really important just because it allowed a, uh, you know, a very diverse range of students to attend. Um, I know a few students who had previously conducted a lot of research, and I knew quite a few actually who had never conducted research in their life. And I think that's great because, you know, no matter how much experience you had, they're willing to take you if they saw, you know, that you actually had this drive and you're actually interested in learning more about, you know, what is collegiate research um, all about. So if you're looking to apply to a pre-collegiate research program, um, I really would recommend that you try to take some challenging courses in high school, at least as challenging as they offer at your high school. I also recommend that you get involved with science fair if you can, um, just because you get a little bit of experience of what it's like, you know, actually conducting and following through with the scientific method. And so, this is nice and it also shows that you're really interested and passionate about science, which will really reflect well when you apply for these types of programs. So really going back now, going back to like middle school, I mentioned, you know, I really got started looking into things like the Arduino and maybe even a little bit of like Raspberry Pi. And so what these are is it's like a microcontroller and it lets you program it and you can do neat little things as simple as from making like a flashing LED to more complex things like making a uh, almost like a weather station, even if you wanted, if you had like a temperature sensor and humidity sensor. It really, it's, it's up to your own imagination what you can create with these devices. And so I got really involved in working with these devices. Um, I did a lot after school, during middle school, um, just because I just found it interesting. And this is when I really learned about how many resources there are online that help you with these things. And it was crazy. I mean, there's just so much stuff online that is all about helping you learn, like almost self-learn. And so I was able to learn the Arduino programming language as well as the basics of C++ just by digging around the internet and learning to do simple things with the Arduino. And then with the Raspberry Pi, I learned the very basics of Python, which was phenomenal because Python is one of the hugest languages now. So it was really just about, you know, finding these resources. And I'd even say now to this day, you know, just you can become part of communities online, uh, especially through the Discord platform. It's like a, it's meant for like gamer chat, but really uh, you can use it to chat about anything. I'm a part of a few communities where it's like dev chats almost, where people just talk about coding, they talk about new technologies. Um, you can find blogs online where people are always talking about technologies that they're passionate about. And once you find these resources, it's it's interesting. You feel like you're part of this like niche community and it's really cool because these people are really so open to getting new members and finding more people who are interested in participating in different things like, you know, coding in different languages or even, you know, getting involved with microcontrollers such as uh, the Raspberry Pi or the Arduino. So I really like Make Magazine. Um, they actually have a website as well, and they just post little cool tips and tricks as well as projects that you can work on, like weekend projects that a lot of them use the Arduino as well as they actually use like the Raspberry Pi to do cool nifty things. Um, in terms of like tech blogs, talking about new tech or just anything tech, I think Hacker News is really good. Uh, it's just a bunch of like tech geeks hop on there and talk about even like current events in tech or they just talk about new emerging technologies. And I think that's pretty cool. It's a more uh, tight knit community willing to talk about these different things. And sometimes we'll even see like CEOs on there of like tech startups, which is pretty cool. It's interesting just to know that like, you know, there's actually a human behind like the facade. So it's not just like some random guy and you know, they're all the way up here. No, they're like down to earth and they're willing to talk to people about what they're interested in, which is tech. And then finally, I would have to say that Adafruit is really cool. Um, and what this is, it's a website and they sell a lot of like tech kits. They sell a lot of stuff having to do with like Arduinos and microcontrollers, but they also offer uh, projects as well. So I highly recommend you check them out. So what I really like about computational science, as I previously mentioned, is how algorithm focused it is. Um, and so what I mean by this is that 
it's a lot of like numerical algorithms. So it's like, how do we find uh, the derivative of a function only using coding? Um, you know, how do we integrate only using like a programming language? It's like different problems like this. And that's why I find it really cool because it's more applicable to different topics in science, particularly. Um, I also like the languages we use a lot. We use a lot of MATLAB, we use a lot of Python. Uh, I think they're just generally enjoyable languages to use. Um, so they're pretty cool. And really scientific computing applies to almost any field you can imagine. There's um, bio computing and physics, you use computing all the time. I mean, you name it, chemistry. I could go on and on all day about this, but no matter what field or subject you're interested in, there's at its core, there's gonna be some aspect of scientific computing that actually you know, sh sheds some light on how do we discover new things in these different fields. My, I think my number one tip when it comes to STEM is, you know, just find a cool community or even find a cool niche and just stick with it. Um, like I said, I was involved with Arduino a lot and now, you know, even my major self is almost like a tight knit community because there's so few kids in it. Uh, but that's what I like about it. You know, everyone knows everybody and it's pretty cool because we're all passionate about the uh, same thing. So I'd say, you know, find your interest, um, something you're really passionate about and just stick with that. All right, I hope you enjoyed this interview. For more information and more content, make sure to visit www.sciteens.org. Also, make sure to check out our videos that we recommend here and make sure to subscribe. Thank you and have a good day.